come back, we're going to finish this. This is a nine, ten year old, right? And so I'm talking to him, and you know what? At the end of the games, I won. I beat him. He's like, yeah, you didn't beat him. I beat him. I don't like to lose. But then there was one time I decided to take a dive. I decided to take a dive. This was this guy's birthday. And I was playing thumb wrestling with him. And he said, no, he never beat me. So I said, you know what? It's your birthday. I took a dive. Took one, two, four, <laughs> pulled out right in the nick of time. I said, you're not going to beat me that easy. And I said, I said, okay, I'm going to lose this time. One, two, no, man, I just can't do it. I mean, I can't lose. I just can't. And then I went, one, two, tears coming out of my eyes. <laughs> Three. And he started to shout. Now, that's just a little simple game. But you know what? Many of you are deciding to lose. You know when you decide to lose? When you decide to go against God's word. When God says, stop, and you say, I'll continue. Because it's when you continue that you decide to lose. Notice what the verse says in, in, in um, Proverbs 29, verse 1. It says, See that being often reproved, hardeneth his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. And we're going to look at a Bible character who hardened his neck. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 26. Let's go that quickly. 2 Chronicles chapter 26. And I'm going to try to wrap this up very quickly, you guys. All right? So bear with me. I want you to get this message. Because when we step forward, when God says, Stop! We choose to lose. And the message is simply this. Don't choose to lose. Don't choose to lose. Second Chronicles chapter 26. And we'll be reading verse 16 through 18. And here it is. I'll give you the context. Here is the king, Uzziah. He was a king at 16 years old. Could you imagine that at 16 years old? How many of you are 16 and young? Wow. You could imagine you're the prime minister of the, the Bahamas. Yes. 16 years old. <laughs> 16 years old and the king of Israel but I want you to notice something because we're going to learn some things that happen in his life where he chose to lose and I hope that all of us in this room will not make the same decision that this young man this king made and so as we look it talks about from verse 1 to verse 15 it talks about all of the great things that he did but I want you to read verse, um, verse 15 in, in, in 2, Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 15. It says, And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped. What, what, are, what does the next four words say? <laughs> That he was strong. You see what led to this young man's destruction was one word, pride. One word, pride. Here is the king, 16 years old, and now he's coming on. He's like, it says he reigned 42 years. And now here it is, one word, pride. And so I want you to notice, first of all, as we look at not choosing to lose, as when God says stop and we continue First of all, I want you to see a heart-rendering reproof from God. A heart-rendering reproof from God. It's like God was saying, stop. Now, some of you don't know what he did, but let's read verse 16 and find out what he did. It says in verse 16 in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, it says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against who? God. His God. And went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. And Azariah the priest went in after him. And with him four score priests of the Lord that were valiant men. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It, appert it appertaineth not unto the Uzziah to burn incense unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed. Neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord, um, from the Lord God. So here it is now. This young, this king, he wanted to go into the temple, and at that time, guess what? When you walked into the temple, 
when you walked into the temple, it was the priest who was supposed to be in charge there. And so the priest told him, he said, it's not your responsibility to light the fire. It's only the responsibility of the priest. And the priest was trying to stop him. The priest was trying to tell him, listen, don't do it. You're going to make a mistake. Don't do it. You know what? He had this cry from God to us. Don't do it. But I find as though sometimes we ignore it because some things, many people don't know what we do. It's just between God and us. And God is saying, guess what? I want you to stop. I don't want you to continue in the sin. I want you to stop. You know, some of your parents don't know about the relationship you have. One of the youth group, one, of, one lady I heard is not here tonight because she's with someone. Listen. God, some people may not know you use drugs. Some people may not know that you're involved in pornography. And God is saying to you, stop! But you know what you're doing? You're continuing. And you're choosing to lose. But in this reproof, I see the love of God. I see God's love in His reproof. When He tells us, stop, I see His love. Because, you know, sometimes... We can think, when someone tells us no, they hate us. I mean, be real. How many of you have ever thought that way? Have you ever tried to take a candy from a baby? I mean, you say, no, that's not for you, it's for me. You know, they mean, no, you say, it's not, it's not good for you. And what they do? Cry. And then they do the poochie lip. And then they get angry with you, right? But guess what? You only want what's best for them. <laughs> I can remember a time. There I was. I was like, about Seven, seven up. I was in grade four. And we had funding. I don't know if they still have fun days today. I don't know what they call it. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> I remember the word fun day. Well, anyway, my dad, I went like, I'm telling you this story. I hope you're listening. All right, my dad, he was, at that time, he had a lot of money. I mean, I don't know how much it was, but it was pretty colorful. That's all I can remember. It was like a lot of hundreds. He had a restaurant and everything. And right before fun day, I was the type of guy, you know, every time I left school, I would ask my, my dad for a dollar to give to a girl, you know, I'd say, Daddy, give me a dollar, please. And I'd run back to the girl and give her a dollar, you know. And so, fun day is coming now, and I'm like, you know what, I ain't got no money. You know, Daddy got a lot of money. You know, Daddy, gunk is pretty big. You know, that's like that thick, you know. Well, a hundred, fifty years. You know what, I'll go and sleep by him tonight. You know what I did? I ran by him, I slept by his house. While he was sleeping, he said, he said yeah, somebody went ahead of me already. Go on there, took that, put that in my pocket, went to school. He dropped me in this red Mustang, it was so good. That was supposed to be mine, but it's a rust pocket now. But <laughs> as, we, as I went to school, all my friends there, and I'm pulling out all the money, and I'm like the boss now, I can get like all the cat that I want, you know? I'm the boss, you know? <laughs> I'm ready to give up money, like, you know? And then all of a sudden, <laughs> they call me back and say, your dad is so dad looking for you. Oh, man. I'm like, I can't trust my friends. You know, they're trying to steal, but I can't trust nobody. So I'm like, I, I'm, I just put it in my right shoe, you know. I put it in my shoe, took off my shoe, put it in. So I went to the Mustang again, you know. I said, hey, daddy, what's up? So he said, I'm doing your pockets. I said, what happened? I said, I'm doing your pockets. Took it my pockets. No money, daddy. No money, man. He said, he said, check your bag. He said, check, check, my, check my bag, man. I ain't got no money. He said, take off your shoe. <laughs> 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 he said, I ain't got no money. <laughs> I took off the left one. He said, see, look, I don't have any money. <laughs> he said, no, take off the right one. <laughs> Daddy, I ain't got no money. First time I wouldn't have my eyes, you know. I was like, man. <laughs> I couldn't lift my foot up, put on my shoe. Money was just pouring out. <laughs> he said, give it to me. He said, come by me afterwards, after school. I said, okay. <laughs> I went home and locked the door. <laughs> so I went home and locked the door. And then, oh man, this is going to be on the internet. 
Men är inbyggd. Jag vet inte vad jag vill ha. And so he comes, he comes to the, he comes to the house, and he says, "Come and come, open the door." I said, "No, that's the guy. I have to stay at home." And so my grandma opens the door, and he, he pulls me out, right? And he, he lived. I don't know if you know where I live. On, on Blue Road, there's a white building, right next to that big church, St. Barnabas, big church, yeah. white broken down building. But that was something back then. All right, that's where it all went down. All right. So right up there in the two-story building, that's where we used to live. And he had this big room. I mean, you had a king says, size bear bed, bed in the middle, and sides to run, play, everything. I killed teddy bears like crazy in that room. Right? And so there I was in that room, right? As I was in that room, guess what? He comes in, and I'm, I'm like, it's going to go down. And I'm like, this side of the room, he's on that side of the room. And I say, you're not going to catch me. Man, he had a belt that extended up that long. I mean, like, that was like, he could just swing and touch every corner. So, there I was, right? After he was finished, after he was finished, I was all in tears. He went downstairs, he used to do his body work thing. I went to the window, big glass window. <laughs> you know what I told him? I said, Dad, I even wrote him a letter. I said, you don't my daddy no more. <laughs> I'll forget what he told me. He said, I love you. He said, I love you. And you know, <laughs> it's love her. But what he was, sometimes it's very easy for us. When people try to tell us, stop, don't do it, it's easy for us to think that they don't love us. Hey, guess what? It's easy for you to think your parents don't love you when they stop you from doing something. It's very easy for you to think that your youth leader doesn't love you because you're doing some things. And he says, no, don't do it. It's very easy for you to think that people that God has placed in authority over you don't love you because they tell you to stop. So in this rebellion, Uzziah was told to stop because they were concerned. They loved him. And they didn't want him to be punished. But then the second thing under his rebellion, guess what he did? And under this, this um, rebellion, no, sorry, under this hard rending of reproof. Here it is now, the long suffering. It says, see that being what? Often. Now, is this just one time? This is not just one time. This is over and over repeatedly. Notice what it says in second, let's turn to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter. Second Timothy chapter three. Second Timothy chapter three, verse nine. It says. Now keep your finger in 2 Chronicles chapter 26. All right? It says, the Lord is not what? Slack. 2 Timothy chapter, 2 Peter, sorry. 2 Peter. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3. Can you like, what kind of Bible you got? 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9. You got it? You got it? You got it? It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some men count slackness, but it's long-suffering to us, word, not willing that any should what? Perish. Perish but that how many? All. All should come to repentance. But notice what it says. But the day of the Lord will come. So he's saying, guess what? God is coming. And the people in coming down there were saying, where, where are the promise of his coming? We sent our fathers left. Everything continued as they were. And he's there asking now, where is God? But you know what? God just didn't want them to perish. And you know, there's a song, I don't know, <laughs> now some of you are going to, I don't know if you all but I hope you don't continue to listen to Paris, right? But he's saying, there's a song, yeah, like what, y'all just listen to him? No, don't listen to Paris, I'm in it. All right? Uh, there's, a thing, there's, a, there's a statement he makes in the song. Don't take my sweetness for weakness. Kindness. Kindness for weakness, right? You, you guys know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I hope y'all are still listening to it, right? But don't take my kindness for weakness. And you know what we do? We take the kindness of God for what? For weakness. Because God says, you know, don't do it. You know what? I used to do that a lot. You know, take the kindness of my parents for weakness. I used to take the kindness of my mother when she would tell me, stop, stop. Stop, and I feel it. What the? You know? <laughs> I just got it, right? She 
you slap me to pieces, right? But guess what? You know what the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 11? Because sentence against an evil work is not um, executed speedily, therefore the heart of man is set in them to do evil. It says just because you haven't been judged, you're continuing. Guess what? Some of you are continuing in sin because the judgment hasn't fought. And God is, God is trying to tell you, stop. Don't go. I, I don't want to punish you. I don't want to judge you. I love you. I want you. I want the best for you. But you know what you're saying? Hmm. I can step a little further. I mean, I'm not, I didn't get judged. So I can take another step. God is saying, listen, hey, you've touched that girl far enough. Listen, you're going to make a mistake, all right? Stop touching her. And you say, God, I can just go a little bit further. And just because the judgment has not fallen, you know what you say? I can go on. But don't mistake it. Don't mistake the long suffering of God. Don't mistake the love of God because the love of God wants you to stop. But if you continue, what does it say in verse 10? The day of the Lord, what? Will come. And I fear that some of you are so filled with pride that you continue on in sin and God is saying, I want you to stop, please stop. I don't want to hurt you. I don't want to break you. I don't want to judge you. But you know what you're saying? Because you haven't judged me, I'm going to continue. So here it is, this king, he was told to stop. But the second thing what it says about he that being often reproved hardening his neck shall be what? He that, oft, he that being often reproved does what? Hardened his neck. Here is a personal rebellion. Guess what he says? It says, he hardened his neck. And in verse 18, let's, let's look back to 2 Chronicles. In verse 18, notice what it says in verse 18. It says, and they, 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verse 18. And they withstood Uzziah, the king, and said unto him, It appertaineth not unto thee. It, said, it appertained not unto the Uzziah to burn incense <clears throat> unto the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for th thine honor from the Lord God. And notice what it says in verse 19. Then Uzziah was what? <coughs> he was wroth. And it says, and had a center in his hand to burn incense. And here it is, he got angry. And here is the pride now. Here is the pride an unreasonable rebellion. The second thing is an unreasonable rebellion because here it is now the God that had his life in his hand. He is now rebelling. The God that made him to prosper. He is now rebelling against that same God. You see in verse 16, verse 5, notice, let's look at verse 5. What does it say? Wow, it says, and he saw God. And what does the last 5 verse say? So he says, God made him the cross. Let's look at verse 7. And it says what? And God what? And so God helped him. But then when you come down to verse 15, when you see where he was marvelously helped, what? Verse 15. At the last part of verse 15. So here it is now. God marvelously helped him. God was helping him. God was with him. When he saw him. When he saw God, God was with him. But it came a point when he got what? Listen to this very carefully. I want all of you to sit, sit, up, sit up good. Sit up good now. Listen to this very carefully. He was strong. When he got strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. Listen to me. Tell me. How a woman carry a child for nine months and almost go near death experience to deliver that child. And after 13 years, that child has the heart to rebel against their mother. When, it was a, when that child was a baby, who took care of it? The mother. When that child needed to be cleaned, fed, Nurtured, protected, who did it? But now all of a sudden, the child has grown strong. And what has happened now? His heart is what? Lifted up. 
lift it up. And it's a personal choice. Guess what? When Adam took that fruit, he had to deal with the consequences. When Achan sinned, he had to deal with the consequences. When Judas kissed the face of Jesus, he had to live with the consequences. It was his personal choice. And some of you, you are lifted up in pride. Your heart has been lifted up. And then this king, I want you to notice the second thing. What, is, what happened? What does it say next? In verse um, 19. And while he was what happened with the priest? It says, while he was raw. You know what happened? The priest was trying to warn him. They were trying to tell him, stop. Don't do it. You know what he did? He got angry at the priest. Hmm. He got angry at the priest. And while he was angry, what happened? Yes. The judgment fell. Wow. Listen to me carefully. God has sent some people in your life to tell you, stop. Amen, brother. But you know what happens? When they tell you stop, what do you do? You get angry. And when, what happened to this young man when he got angry? Who judged him? God, God judged him. That's right. I don't know if you catch this. Because sometimes we can think we have it all figured out. Sometimes we can think that, hey, I know what's best. And pride will lead you to your destruction. That's right, preacher. And I'm trying to warn some of you because some of you have the mentality, I'm the boss. I can do what I want to do. I can live the way I want. But you don't realize something, you're blinded. That's right. And people are in your life and trying to tell you, stop, don't do it. And you get angry. Hmm. And the third thing I want to show you about this is an irreversible retribution. Because the judgment has fallen and it cannot be reversed. But look at the timing. What does he say? In verse in Proverbs 29, he that being often reproved, hardened of his neck, <coughs> shall what? Suddenly. 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 Suddenly be destroyed. He said he shall suddenly be destroyed. But also I want you to know the type. It says destroy. And then I want to show you the next thing. The terror of it all. It's without what? Remedy. Without remedy. I want you to get this carefully now. Here it was that God was telling this young man, stop. But they continued. And because they continued, the judgment fell. And now, I want you to read verse 21. Read verse 21. Stop right there. Hmm. Wow. In the beginning of this chapter, we read that Uzziah was at the age of 16, he became a what? It was the will of God for Uzziah to be what? For the rest of his life. But because of pride, he chose to lose. And the will of God <coughs> passed by him. Right now, I don't know what it is in your life. What God has been telling you to turn aside from. But if you continue in sin, when God has clearly told you to stop, then you choose to lose. You choose to lose. Because it's the will of God for us to turn away from sin. That's right. And follow God. Amen. But pride says, I will not. And you get angry. And while you are angry, the wrath is going to fall. And for the rest of his life, he lived as a leper. Listen to me carefully. The relationships you're in, God has been telling you, stop. Preach, brother. You know that boy you say it. That's right, preacher. Stop. Amen. Because when you get pregnant, and he leaves. You're gonna have to live with the with the child for the rest. Of wow, life. good illustration. Excellent. Listen, when you get involved in drugs, alcohol, pornography, you're gonna have to live with those thoughts mm. for the rest of your 
life. Amen. And God is trying to stand at the door and say, say, stop. Don't continue. But because of pride, you know what you say? I'll choose to lose. I'll choose to lose. I'll just close with this Bible, with this, this story what happened in the Bible. Let's look at 2 Samuel chapter 2. 2 Samuel chapter 2. And I'm just going to, before I lead you up to it, 2 Samuel chapter 2, I'm just going to tell you what's happening here. Here it is now. Abner is now the general. Saul is dead. Saul and David, you know David. Saul was the first king and after him was David. And now Saul died. But then Abner was the general for Saul's army. And so he was kind of representing Saul, Saul's um, um, lineage, you would say. And then David had Joab. And Joab was a mighty man. I mean, you, let, you read the story about Joab. These guys were crazy. But he had some brothers. These brothers were. He had, they had, he had another brother called Ashael. And Ashael was, a, he was like, he was a guy that really liked to go after it. I mean, you, you give him the hardest job, he would want to do it. I mean, he was the kind of go-getter of the crew. And it came now where these men, this day, the, the men of David and the men of Abner were fighting. And now in the, in the heat of the battle, Ashael wants to fight Abner. Now get this now. Ab Ashael was Abner's little brother. I mean Joab's little brother. Joab and Abner were both generals. And so Ab Ashael was Joab's little brother. And Joab and Abner had a good friend, good relationship. And so when um, Abner saw Ashael in the battle, he said, guess what? I don't want to hurt you. Turn aside. Go, to, go fight the little jabroni. Don't fight me. I don't want to kill you because you're, you're, I know your brother. You're, you're, you're my friend. I don't, want, I, don't want to, I don't want to be problems between your brother and I. I want you to stop. But you know what Ashael did? He continued. He continued pursuing after Abner because you know why? He would be able to say, I killed the general. I'm the big boss now. And what was that in his heart? Right. right. But what Abner was trying to tell him, Abner was trying to tell him, please, stop. Turn around. Go fight somebody else. I do not want to kill you. And Abner, Ashel said, I'm going after you. And he rode fiercely. And he was almost at Abner. And Abner had to make the choice. And if you read this passage, let's read it together because we're going to see where pride leads us. In verse 23 of 2 Samuel chapter 2. Let's read verse 22. Look verse 23. Please pay attention to verse 23. Read it. How he refused to turn aside. Wherefore Abner was a hinder and a spare of the children that the spare came out of the army and he fell down there and died in the same place. And it came to pass that as many as came to the place where Ashel fell down and died in the same You got the picture. How be it? Hmm. He refused. Abner said, Ashael, turn aside! Ashael said, no. Abner told him, turn aside. He said, no. And he died. And when he died, everyone stood still and saw him. Why did he die? He had a hard rendering reproof. Don't Follow me. Stop. But here was the pride in his heart where he continued. And then you have an irreversible judgment that fell on him. He died. And that without remedy. Turn aside. Turn aside. You know what God says to us? He said, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Hmm. God has no pleasure in judgment. But if you, turn, if you don't turn aside, then you're going to experience the judgment of God. That's right. Just turn aside. I don't know what sin is in your life. I don't know. But I know the Bible talks about pride. And pride will keep you 
on the road to destruction. But if you humble yourself and say, God, by your grace, I'm going to turn aside. I have heard you telling me to stop a long time ago. And I've continued. But tonight, by your grace, I'm going to turn aside. With all that's power and all that's good.